Welcome to the country, where we do country things. And on today's video, I'm gonna take you guys over to the grit and gravel greenhouse. Just give you a look at what's doing well over there this time of the year. So it's midsummer, and we're kind of transitioning out of the the late spring, early summer type crops with the determinate tomatoes and things like that. So we've taken a lot of things out of there, and we need to uh, replant a few things since we got some space and do a little bit of experimenting with a, a few other things. So. Uh, just give me a second to get over there and I'll be right back. Okay, so I want to start by showing you guys what we've got going on in here right now as far as um, the midsummer type stuff that we've that we've uh, that we've left in the greenhouse. Now all of the uh, determinate tomato plants and all that stuff that we planted early in the spring have kind of run their course and, and I've uh, taking a lot of that stuff out here in the last couple of days and I've, I've made some room for some for some more of this type of stuff that I want to do some experimenting on and just to see what kind of grows well uh, in the heat of the summer here in western Oklahoma and what likes the aquaponics and and um, just kind of get an idea of what I can grow for next year and that's that's kind of you know been the way that we operate for the last three or four or five years is we really try to experiment and do different things and grow different varieties of, of different things to see what uh, what does best in our climate and so we can uh, kind of share that kind of stuff with you guys uh, one thing that I'm really impressed with here is this zucchini uh, it's really done well in the aquaponics as you can see this one plant here that I grew earlier uh, has really done well for us it was just started in a uh, two inch net pot here and given us a lot of fruit so far uh, this is a uh, greenhouse variety it's a or, or it's a it's a part in a carpet variety so it does not require uh, any type of pollination to set fruits and that's really important when you're growing inside of a greenhouse to, uh, to be able to set these fruits without any kind of pollination is important. Uh, there's no bees or anything in here, so uh, without going to this type of, uh, of uh, hybrid, uh, you would not be able to get any pollination or you would have to hand pollinate all of this stuff, which I really don't have time to do, so I just uh, planted one of these plants for now just to see how well it would do. And since it's done so well, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, plant some more today since I've, uh, I've got the room now. But you can see how this thing has uh, still got some fruit on it. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six fruits here on this plant. And we've, uh, like I said, we've harvested uh, several uh, uh, fruits off of it already. Another thing that I'm really uh, impressed with here is this uh, okra. I've never grown okra in my aquaponic system before this year. And again, I didn't plant a lot of plants just because I, I didn't know how well they would do. And these things have done really well. They really like the aquaponic system. Uh, they don't mind the heat. They seem to like they can uh, stand the heat better than a lot of things. 
The leaves look really good. No deficiencies that I can tell. Uh, you can see you got a flower opening up here where it's gonna set a new fruit. Um, we've got one over here that's got a couple of fruits on it already with uh, several more coming out of the top. Now, like I said, this is a, uh, a dwarf variety of, uh, of okra. Uh, it's designed to grow in, in uh, containers and, and small areas like this where um, you, know, you may not have a lot of space, but you can uh, really put a lot of these okra plants in here. And if you trim them up, you can uh, really plant them quite a bit closer together than what I have. Like I said, I didn't plant a whole lot of them because I didn't know how well they would do. But we're gonna we're gonna step these up again next year and, and grow quite a bit of this stuff. Um, I really like okra and a lot of people do and I think it'll do well in the aquaponics. So we have, you can see a lot of the flowers opening up here now with uh, a lot more fruit coming out at the top eventually. So it's done really well here. Uh, this uh, sasu spinach here uh, hasn't done as well as I'd like. I, I bought two cuttings online and uh, rooted them in here and I, I took some cuttings off of this and I'm cloning some cuttings right now of this. That's the only way you can grow it is by, uh, by cloning it, cutting it, cutting the suckers here and then rooting it. So I'm going to overwinter this stuff in the house and then um, take cuttings and restart it again next year. The red Malabar spinach has probably done the best of anything that I've planted so far. So we're really going to uh, step this up a little bit and grow it more next year. I've been harvesting this stuff all summer and, and putting it in salads and stuff. And I really enjoy it. So that's uh, that's something that we uh, we're going to be growing again next year for sure. Over here, I have uh, this longevity spinach. Don't enjoy this as much as say the New Zealand spinach or the uh, the Malabar spinach, but it's doing well. I started out with one plant, and then I've I've uh, cut these and rerooted them. So we've got one, two, three. I've got four plants now and we've taken the leaves off and put them in salads and stuff. Uh, you you wanna kinda use the leaves when they're smaller than that. I've got a little bit of grasshopper damage on here. We've, uh, we're fighting the grasshoppers in here like we always do. So they really like this stuff. And a couple more okra plants that aren't doing as well uh, this is the uh, the grow bed that's on the north side so it's not getting as much sunlight so these are uh, these aren't doing as well just because they're they're not getting it as, as much sunlight and I may just go ahead and pull these guys up and move them um, that's one good thing about this system is you can move these plants around without too much trouble. Um, let's go ahead and just take this one right here. If we don't have too big a root mass. So you can see, it's got quite a bit of roots on it here. And I'll just take this guy and just move him over here where I had that tomato plant. It's not disturbed the roots too much. Kind of get it a little bit more sunlight. I'll take some of this gravel here and just kind of throw up around. Kind of cover the roots over. So uh, that's about how easy it is to move these plants if you 
you ever need to move some. Now you can't get away with that if you had these growing in a conventional garden. Obviously, if you tried to do that, you would kill the plant, but uh, the way this works, it's usually pretty easy to uh, move these plants around if you ever needed to. So we'll see how well that one does, kind of moving it in where it's uh, get a little bit more sunlight. And I'll move that other one over there, uh, out of there today and, and get it up in these front row beds. But for now, what we're gonna do, and I'll show you guys exactly what we're gonna be planting today. Now this uh, bed right here is the bed that had the peppers in it. And the peppers have kind of run their course and they had a lot of uh, problems with aphids and stuff. So I decided to go ahead and move them out, harvest all the peppers off of them and, and go ahead and uh, try to replant some stuff in this bed here. So we're gonna be planting this uh, summer squash. This right here is what we're gonna be planting. And you can see on here where it says it is a parsnocarpic squash. That is the variety. This is from uh, Territorial Seed Company. Now you can't find this uh, part of the carpet squash just anywhere. Um, it was hard for me to find. I looked a lot, did a lot of research and, and finally found a couple of varieties. So uh, if you're looking for a good uh, squash to, to, to grow in your greenhouse, uh, this is the one that I'm gonna be growing and, and showcasing and we'll, uh, We'll keep you up to date on how well it does. So all I'm gonna be doing is putting it in my two inch net pots, just like I always do. So I filled this up with about halfway full of the gravel that's in the grow bed. And what I wanna do here is take my seed and make sure that I plant this thing straight up and down in here with the, uh, the pointed end going down that's going to be where the roots going to come out and I'll just kind of make a little bit of an area there where I can get it to stand straight up just like that uh, well he may not be able to see but I want this seed to stand straight up and down in this pot and then I'm going to take my oyster shell The, the oyster shell chicken grit that I always use, I'm just gonna use that to cover the seed over. And then we'll put this guy in the gravel. So I'll just find me a spot like right here. I'll find the water line. And you don't have to put this thing down very far. This uh, gravel will wick this water up fairly well so you don't want the plant too or the seed too wet so you just find the water line there maybe put it a, a quarter inch or so down into that water and then just kind of cover it back up and that's all there is to planting these things so really easy to plant just try to remember that this stuff is really good at, at wicking water so you don't want that seed setting in the water too much where it might uh, rot rather than go ahead and sprout. So I'm gonna plant four of these in this bed and, and see how well they do. Another thing that I'm gonna try to do that I have never done before is go ahead and plant some onions out from seed. Now, onions do really well in the aquaponics. I plant hundreds of them a year uh, for, for green onions. And I just never have done it from seed before. So what we're gonna to plant today is these uh, Texas Super Sweet onions. We're gonna plant them from seed. And I'm not gonna put them in, in, in net pots. What I'm just gonna do is uh, just kind of scrape 
scratch out a little spot here where I can just see the water. Take a few of these onion seeds. Just kind of sprinkle them out just like that. And then we'll just cover them over. That's quite a bit more seeds in that space than what will really grow there. What I'll do is when those things come up, I'll just pull them out of the gravel and I'll just place them uh, as far apart as I want to in this grow bed. Uh, again, uh, the really good thing about growing in this gravel and stuff is you can uh, move your plants around at will and not really uh, harm the plants too much. So uh, we'll just plant those in that little spot right there. And as they come up, we'll thin them out and we'll move them down and be able to adjust the thickness of our planting without having to pull the plants and throw them away. And a lot of people, uh, when they thin their plants out, you know, they, they throw in the, the ones that they pull out, they're throwing them away. Well, with this uh, system here, you can just pull them up and you can just move them uh, around the system wherever you want and replant them and it, it uh, really works out well when you're when you're growing in these aquaponic systems to kind of move these plants around so anyway there's a little update on what's going on with the aquaponic system today um, we'll keep you updated on how these onions do and, and how this uh this summer squash does uh, planting it this late in the season i don't know how well it's going to do so we'll just have to uh plant it and see how it does so i appreciate you guys watching and We'll be back.